Hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Animal World Live with me, Brent Smith. I cannot wait to delve into the wonderful creatures of the African bush and beyond with you on tonight's episode. And thank you, Kalena, already um, for that kind donation. And it's wonderful to have you guys here live on Animal World Live. I saw someone was catching Animal World Live for the first time live, I think. There we go, Daisy's Place 2. Welcome, I'm glad you're able to catch us live today. It's the first time watching Painted Dog TV live. So a big welcome, Daisy. As I said, we've got lots of exciting stuff planned for you. I'm just gonna say hello to a few people quickly. Um, Kalena, I said hello to you already. Hello, Boo in Arizona. Michael, hi. Uh, Nomadic Rambling, Safari Lover, nice to have you here. Vicky, Yvonne, uh, Janice, Shamsung, all the way from Congo, or DRC. Uh, Mrs. Grumpy. I hope you're not grumpy tonight, Mrs. Grumpy. Oh, thank you, Boo! Um, Larry VM always does an amazing job picking music. He seems to be a, somewhat of a music magician. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Judy. Um, who else? TJS Widget. That's an interesting one. Hello, TJS Widget. Nice to have you here. So as I said, um, slowly but surely, oh, Pterodactyl, nice to have you here as always. Uh, we, we're developing the Animal World live show and, and we're very excited to uh, try new things with you guys and, and as, as the show develops, I'm, I'm quite excited with the, the way it's going and um, we're gonna keep, keep going at it. Uh, of course, we're still under lockdown here in South Africa until um, the end of the month and we are very very fortunate very blessed to be out in the magnificent Reedsbrate game reserve so we are lucky enough to able to continue to go out and find you guys animals oh thank you Yvonne thank you Marcy Melinda also your first time live thank you Melinda thank you for joining us um hello Sarah um Nicholas in Peter Maritzburg I was born in Peter Maritzburg Nicholas hello Michelle um, so very exciting stuff. So we're going to sort of dive into the, the bones of the show, so to speak. And we've had some wonderful sightings on our live remote bush cameras over the last while. And, uh, this one is particularly cute and it's not one we get to see too often, even on the live bush cam. So let's go have a look at one of the cutest little primates in the world. So here we go. This is actually in well, just on the edge of my garden and uh, there is a wonderful little creature off to the right you might have spotted and uh, it's a little lesser bush baby or South African Galego and uh, they quite often like to walk not on all fours and we'll see that very shortly there. Look at that. Duk, duk, duk. They don't like getting their front feet too wet um, but that's coming to drink. And they actually nest in the roof of our house occasionally, and we've had a few babies there. Now, this one's particularly coming to drink, but they also spend some time around yup, at the waterhole uh, to catch the insects that are attracted there. So the lesser, the, the lesser bush baby, or South African Gallego, is mostly an insectivore, uh, and uh, so they eat lots of moths, and, and another favorite of theirs, and chloa, my Jack Russells is the, the um, ant lions, the adult ant lions, as they, or lace wings as the adults are called. Uh, they'd like to feed on those. Uh, of course, they do also eat fruit and whatnot, and they urinate on their hands and feet. Uh, so if you ever have someone who's got a pet bush baby, just remember they've been paying all of them over themselves before jumping on you. And the reason they do that is that's how they mark their territory. It makes it much easier as they move through their nocturnal paths and trajectories they can mark their territory to make sure other bush babies don't come into it now the next little tip is of my favorite antelope i think it's it's got a friend with it as well but i do love this antelope and i'll chat a little bit about them as we watch the clip and as we uh after the clip as well now it is one of the more secretive little animals we are there we go so there is an impala off to the right but there is a little male bushbuck isn't that they are absolutely beautiful and they are my favorite antelope 
and uh, we don't see them too often. They tend to live around the edges of the rivers and thickets and are generally more active in the crepuscular hours, so in the early morning and late evening and into the night and uh, during the heat of the day and the day they will quite often lie up in a thicket. Now the wonderful thing about the bushbuck and this is a young male um, and you can see that orange coloring. Now bushbuck depending on where they are in, in, in southern Africa actually have different colorations so you can see he's quite orange now if you were in Peter Maritzburg like some of our um, some people here watching um, the bushback males there will be actually almost dark chocolate brown and the further north you go in Africa the lighter the coloration comes um, it could be depending on the vegetation and stuff like that but uh, one of the reasons I do love bushback so much is to do with their scientific name the second part of their scientific name is scriptus so it's Trafalagos scriptus uh, scriptus means the one who is drawn on and those beautiful little white dots looks like someone's just taken a paintbrush and dabbed on them and uh, the Zulu and Shangan name now Zulu is quite interesting because they've actually got two different names because there's such sexual dimorphism between the males and females uh, so that dark chocolate brown of a, a male bushback from the Eastern Cape or KwaZulu-Natal um, they are called Nkonkas um, but the females are called Mbawala, Mbawala and the females and males in this part of the world in Shangan are also called Mbawala so which is the one that was that has been drawn on or written on so isn't that absolutely wonderful my all-time favorite antelope and strangely enough it was also my grandfather's favorite antelope and uh, if you do ever get a chance to watch them I love the way they walk they walk so carefully and it's one of the few antelopes and well, I suppose Nyala do but not quite to the same degree as bushbuck is because they live in the thickets and they rely on stealth to protect themselves from predators they will almost put their back foot in the exact same spot that their front foot has stepped to avoid making noise so when you're looking at their tracks you often see that they've stepped right on the front foot track with the back foot track and that is because of them living in quite thick areas and they want to move around as silently as possible as to not attract attention to themselves so there we go a little bit about bushbuck oh dear let's see oh we've got so many comments and questions here i will get through to them it's so it's so nice to have so much interaction with you guys we really do appreciate it um see are there more i always forget about bushbucks it is because they are so secretive and uh they, but, but as i said i have had such wonderful times watching them um there we go sparrow another uncommon wonderful sighting indeed um Kathy in Ohio, oh, I made it live, yay! Um, have there been any kills on our cams? Only uh, the, the, the hyena cub being killed by the, the male lion so far. But who knows, as we move into dry season, there might be more action around there. Okay, and the next clip is, I've forgotten, I didn't hear what you said there, VMP. Ah, just a nice big herd of wildebeest and impala and zebra all around um, the sescant and you can see this wildebeest coming to check out the the wide camera now this area even though it looks like there's almost no grass there there is a very good grazing area and there's lots of nice little herbs and grasses around there so we do get a lot of animals uh, at in this particular area and the lions hang out there a lot as well as we've seen them on the on the cams quite frequently so it's really really wonderful to actually have a camera in that area and that probably has caught the most species of all of our cameras and I think as we move into the uh, the dry season we're going to catch a few more species that we have not seen on the live cams before now we're going to go back to Seskant now uh, and see what else has been happening there over the last few days now here, yeah, this is actually one of my favorites, um, and there's some very interesting be behavior happening here. So you've got a lovely big herd of impala, and then the banded mongooses come in to drink. And if you look carefully around at the same time, there are some chakma baboons. There's a female coming through to drink now. But of course, it's very busy. She looks a bit distracted by all the busyness around the waterhole. Baboons, banded mongoose, and of course the impala. Now you watch... Isn't that amazing? So the audio, from listening to the audio and stuff there, one of the baboons gave a false alarm call. Now you can hear the Impala alarm calling. 
the baboon decided to give a false alarm call to try confuse, well, successfully confuse the other animals that there was a potential predator around so she could go have a drink without being disturbed. Uh, isn't that absolutely amazing? So it shows the level of attention and intelligence by some of the, the primates. So there's a, f a fake bah, and off run all the other ants open in case there's a lion or a leopard or something around and off goes the baboon to enjoy a private drink without all the commotion around the water hole. Thank you very much, Nunya. Hello, Tom in Sunny California. Let's have a look. We'll see if we've got any nice questions coming through. Michael um, is wondering, are the animals affected, or the antelopes affected by the fences and stuff? Well, certain antelope, like Kudu and Eland, will just jump over any fence, uh, unless it's about three meters high. But generally, not really. Oh, you can hear Claw as she's found something. Claw, get up! <whistles> Naughty puppy. Um, so, but generally not. But I just want to focus on that's how amazingly smart that, that baboon is. And it shows you, bah, and then everything runs off. Okay, now I can enjoy a drink in peace without all the other animals around. So we are catching very, very interesting behavior that you're not seeing normally. Okay, now one of our cameras that hasn't been active and we've been keeping our fingers crossed that the hyenas are going to come back, but every now and then we catch some other critters crawling around what was the Leadwood hyena den. So here we've got some banded mongoose and I was also hoping that they might set up shop. They would also den in a place like this, but at the moment it's just a troop coming through and feeding, uh, looking if they can find anything. Now you'll notice towards the end here there is an alarm call again by one of the mongooses and you just watch them bombshell in all the directions. Um, well, it's coming up soon I think. Have I preempted myself? <laughs> I've gone a little bit too ahead of myself, but you watch, they're actually going down into the holes uh, looking for, there we go. Now, one of the, the sentries of the mongooses probably gave a little short, sharp call, since we're talking about alarm calls after that baboon then, probably to a bird of prey, and you saw how they scattered. Now, talking about animals pretending to do alarm calls so they can get a free meal or an easy drink like that baboon did, is uh, the fork-tailed drongo, drongos of the Kalahari will actually mimic uh, a meerkat alarm call and specifically the meerkat alarm call for danger from above which is normally an eagle of some kind especially if they see a meerkat with a nice tasty morsel they'll fake a meerkat alarm call sending all the meerkats scuttling in all directions so they can go steal the food now let's see if we've got any questions coming through here Chris, I have no idea about the zonkey that was born in Africa. If it is what I think it is, it's a zebra and a donkey, it's probably because of people putting them together and then my thoughts are it's bad, just like ligers and things like that. Um, here's a, Vicky, a very bad baboon um, chasing everyone away. Now, I know why the next couple of clips made it into the highlight reel because outside of the big cats, Vim has a very special affinity for a specific mongoose. Let's go have a look at Vim's favorite, well, one of his favorite mongooses. Vim loves all mongooses. But here we've got a slender mongoose and uh, Vim desperately one day wants to make a full documentary on them. Now they are incredibly efficient little hunters. Now uh, this one is trying to get there to have a drink. I also think it might be trying to catch a frog and it's trying to sneak around to see if it's going to be able to grab one of the platana frogs that live in there and when it hasn't succeeded uh, it's just gone for a drink but isn't that absolutely wonderful the big and the small all visiting the sescant waterhole okay now fortunately we've got some close-up versions of a slender mongoose at the critter cam at home just having a drink isn't that wonderful? They are absolutely beautiful little creatures. And as I said, incredibly efficient hunters. I've seen them leap through tree branches trying to catch squirrels. They're not much bigger than a squirrel, but much, much stronger and ferocious little carnivores. Absolutely amazing that we're able to catch all these wonderful creatures uh, behaving as they would without any humans around. Now, it's always that discussion. If we're there documenting it, are they behaving differently? And I think to a degree, yes, in some ways the animals do behave differently when we're there in a vehicle, uh, in other ways not. But it is wonderful that we are able to do both here at Painted Dog TV. And uh, let's have a look. 
Now, we've been saving this one till the end because with the world as serious as it, as it is at the moment, we all need a bit of humor and anyone who's got siblings will understand this clip even better. So, the lions have been spending quite a lot of time around Seskant and then when your sibling gives you a fright <laughs> and you jump and fall into the swimming pool. Now, of course, as most of you know, lions do not like water very much, uh, but that was absolutely brilliant. I, I chuckled for a good few hours after that happened, and uh, I can just imagine me doing it to my younger brother. So if you do have siblings, um, siblings around and you've pushed them into the pool or snuck around the corner and gone, woof, um, it is definitely one of the funnier things around. So, okay, we're coming up to one of, I'm sure, one of your favorite sections of the uh, the show, and that's our catch up with young Brian. So let's see what Brian has to say about what he's been up to. He made it! Yes. He's not yes. sitting down, he made it in time. On time and ready to tackle your questions. Thank you so this. much, JS. Um, I'm just going to answer the question from JS quickly. Um, JS, who fills up the water hole? It looks really low. Um, the our pumps put on and um, it's on a bore valve system. So once it gets to a certain point, um, it kicks in and fills itself up. Uh, sometimes when there's a leaky pipe, as there was at Seskant, um, you guys might have seen on Monday where we were fixing the pipe and the lions came to visit us. Um, yes. So that might be while it's low. It should be very full now. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later because we all got a bit of a surprise last night at about 2 a.m. Okay. Let me just see if we've got any questions for Brian. <laughs> right. There we go. Wheelie Girl says, I have five siblings, so you definitely understand. Uh, Samantha, hi, young Brian. Hello, Samantha. Uh, oh, Boo Brian. in Arizona also says, hi, Brian. So does Vicky. And animal tested, love approved. I see the spelling of my name is correct on some of them, but uh, incorrect on a few. Yes. B-R-Y-A-N. The only way you can spell it. Why? Ha ha ha, I'm so funny. Is that Brian? <laughs> that's it. That's there we go. Okay, so Brian, what yes. have you been up to? Oh, uh, the highlight for the past couple of days was probably that big storm we had last, last night. night. Yeah, it was huge. It woke me up at about one, half past one. Um, and the dorm room is got a very thin, Ooh, the whole house, the whole house, mm. very thin tin roof. Um, it ex exemplifies the sound tenfold. So you can imagine the, the noise when we've got 50 millimeters of rain in Probably six hours. Less than actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'd say probably properly raining um, yeah. from about two. Um, to about five this so, morning when we had the proper oh, proper rain. It was insane and the lightning and the thunder and you just wrapped up in your blankets and you feel so warm and cozy and nothing better than that feeling when you know you're in the middle of nowhere um, and you just feel so so safe and cozy in your in your bed. It is although when you VM or Brent we start worrying. Hey VM, <laughs> oh no is the lightning gonna hit the booming um, the repeater yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that oh, is the power gonna go off? Yeah, is, is the wind gonna blow the cameras <laughs> it's off? off yeah, um, so yeah, when you're Brandon VM, when you hear that, you sort of start going, please, nothing break, <laughs> please, nothing break. I can imagine. Now VM even got up and turned everything off, unplugged all our editing equipment um, to make sure. Proper foresight there. Well, as soon as you hear lightning like that, yeah. um, you got to be very careful. And yeah. uh, we get some properly big storms here that could, and you and of course, that. especially you know. now because we're gonna be unable, we're unable to get a replacement yeah I mean, so if, uh, if something go. blows or, or whatnot it's, it's a big problem at the moment yeah well at least we're all prepared we're all stocked up we don't have to worry too much about the things but uh when they happen we are very resourceful people and we'll and we'll make a plan on that train exactly um, here we go. The sound of rain on a tin roof is one of my favorites from Shamsung. Oh. Um, Samantha has corrected how she spelled your name. She says, sorry, young Brian. <laughs> You're um, forgiven this time. Yes, so does Boo. Um, Manuel, there will be uh, updates uh, later in the week on the Lions and Cheetahs. MP has been very hard to find over the last while. We haven't seen him in a while. So um, we will we will definitely keep you updated on the movements of all the Lions and Cheetahs uh, while we're out here during lockdown. Um, let's see what other uh, Betty um, at the moment we don't have any very relaxed uh, mongoose 
Brian? Yes. What is the collective noun for a group of mongoose? A business of there mongoose. There we go. <laughs> there we go. We don't have any very uh, relaxed businesses that we can get close to on foot yet. Uh, but as we spend more time in areas, we'll definitely, hopefully, habituate a business of mongoose. Love that collective noun. It is, it is a great collective noun. Now, I think I'm going to test you on some collective nouns as we go through here. Oh, Are you ready? No, but let's do it anyway. Well, before we do that, I think we should go have a look at Brian learning some animal tracks. We've got the track here that Brian's got to try to figure out. What do you think this is? Now, have a look how big its little jumps are. It is pretty big, so it must be a medium sized animal. As a cheat, I know you said to me earlier that it is a mammal. I'm not too sure if it's an antelope. It's not an antelope. So it's smaller than an antelope, smaller than, a, than, a, than an impala. Much. Because they have claws. It's definitely not a porcupine. How many legs does it have? <laughs> well, it looks like it has. I'm not too sure if this whole track is is one one print, or it's walking. It's walking. Um, I don't know. What, I don't know how you call so, it. Like, like a I mean, look at look how big the gap is from there to there. So it's probably what about a meter? About a meter. This one was moving fast. Okay. And it's got it there's no discernible like hand markings. No, well have you looked at the other tracks of the same thing? If you have a look carefully here. You can see a bit more of the track here. Not much more, but a bit more. Oh yes, I can actually. It looks like a tiny little 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 bat shape there almost. So, willing to take a guess or is it time to give up. It's not a jackal is it? Not at all. A jackal will be a normal dog black track Okay. and you'll have the two claws that stick out on the soft sand. Oh, oh, who's going to stick here? Are these the... Oof, these are individual feet. Okay and are those the two claws? Or the it's two? not a jackal. Okay. Ja jackal is no, 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 big. No. This okay. is tiny. Okay I have no idea. Liam? Does the cameraman want to have a guess? I think it's a squirrel. It is indeed a tree squirrel. It's a squirrel. It's a squirrel running. So look how they sit. Is he hopping? It's hopping. So and also he'll sit on his back legs, lift his front legs, but oh, when yeah. he's running, he's going jump, 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 jump. Okay. Hello. Thank you very much. Um, yes, um, Brian. The, how was that? It was quite stressful because I thought. So, as a person who doesn't know how to track, it looked like literally two sticks being put into the ground, one after one after another. <laughs> so it was quite confusing, and squirrel didn't come into my thoughts at all. Um, uh, I, at one point, I thought it was an, an impala walking funny because it was <laughs> pointing down to the ground, but I was corrected swiftly as as usual. <laughs> So I got it right in it. Or well, Brent told me eventually. Yes. So oh, Vim actually. There was Vim who oh, yes, guessed it. Was. it yeah. 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 Um, all our noise says we need to channel our inner Gilligan and Professor. I don't. We. I don't know what Gilligan is. Neither do and I. Professor. I know there was a show called Gilligan's Island, but I don't think I've ever watched it. I don't think um, I've thank you that. very much, Pterodactyl. Um, okay. So we got two questions for Brian. We're going to get back to those. I haven't forgotten them. Um, and a lot of you were saying Easter Bunny, Scrub Hair, whatnot. Scrub hair has very similar tracks. They would have been quite a lot bigger there. The reason those squirrel tracks look quite big because it was in very soft sand. Mm. So they did look bigger than they would have been. Oh, thank you, Marcy. Okay, let's see. I saw those two questions there. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go back to that. Um, Michael, thank you very much. I would love to teach you if you manage to do get our chair eventually. Um, Boo was going to guess a peg-legged bush baby, but... Um, <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, a la more, uh, the squirrel track is, is much, much smaller. So uh, you must think, so the whole body length of a squirrel is about that. Mm. So if we looked at that, maybe, I don't know how mm. I'm going to do this. No, that paper my, my, my paper got wet during the storm last night. So Wet is an understatement. <laughs> it's soaked. <laughs> we can try. Oh dear, that didn't work very well. <laughs> okay, but so... Uh, if, if we're just looking at probably the length of a squirrel, 
Oh, he's got very good art skills. Okay, it's not on this one. Uh, Zander Key, is that going to work? I don't know. So, that's more or less what they look like. Often the front two are much closer together. Um, and a hair would probably be double that. So, probably almost the size of the page. For those of you wondering, sorry, this is, I need to get a better piece of paper yeah, that hasn't please. been through a, a massive rainstorm. <laughs> we'll do for now. Um, okay, that's it. Um, we're going to go back to Brian tracking before we feed Brian his questions. Yeah. So let's have a look at the next track we did with Brian, probably about two minutes after we did the last one. Yeah, very shortly after. Still doing tracks with Brian, except Brent is on camera now, yes. while Verma is getting the FS ready. Now we have quite a cool track here. Oh, I'm just trying to see, there we go, that's where we can see it nicely. Yeah. Now you can see there's a long line in the sand. So what do you think it is, Brian? Okay, so I know it's not a, 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 a lizard or a leg of one, because you would see it's drag, it, it, it's stomach dragging or it's body dragging. Um, but you can see it's little. I think I think these are the feet of the of the animal. Yes. To the track, and I'm hoping I'm right because I think that this is this is the tail dragging. It is the tail dragging, but what animal is it? Well, it's a very distinct feet next to the two. You've actually already said what animal it is. A legavar. It is indeed a legavar. <laughs> <laughs> so it stands upright, it doesn't Sometimes. It's moving. Awesome. Here we go. So that was the second one. Um, now we're going to go back to some questions for Brian. Well, first we say, yes, Tom yes. says we should have called this the life of Brian. And we might have been sued by Monty Python, I don't know. But Tom, that's a very good name because it's one of my favorite movies. So. But it, Brian was spelled differently then. We might be able to get away with it. It was spelled with the I I A N. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so now you defend it. Now, what about spelling Brian that way? For the, are, you, are you saying um, the Monty Python crew got it wrong? I can forgive the Pythons for, uh, okay. for, for, for making that mistake. Fair enough. I do love the Pythons myself. Um, so Kathy in Ohio, Brian, why, yes. uh, why did a city boy decide to do this journey? Well, Kathy from Ohio, um, it was a very spontaneous decision, and it didn't come. Well, it, it it did. It came very quickly, because once I finished that university last year, I spent about three months at home, umming and eyeing on what to do. I was very undecided, uh, and I couldn't obviously stay at home the whole time. So. While we were on holiday in, in Durban, um, a couple of my friends are guides themselves and they suggested to me I uh, apply to become a guide and that got me thinking and that kind of opened the gates to a much broader conversation of what my lifestyle was and since I can remember I've always been an outdoor person, I love being out here and fiddling in the garage and building things and making things work, taking things apart um, and funny enough my dad knew Brent's Bobby. mom very well and so we got in touch that way and yeah this is this is where I am now uh, one call led to another and I'm here being trained by Brent and it's yeah eye-opening and I've learned so much in the last two two and a half months I think yeah and this is yeah this is how, this is this is how we got here and I couldn't ask for a better a better time a bit and a better place to be so I think that the question. I'm sorry, a lot of people don't know what a Legavan is. Brian, explain what a Legavan is and which Legavan it is. Okay, it was a, it was a, a, a monitor lizard, a rock monitor lizard that yeah. lives in, in knob thorns. And we actually saw one. Oh, yeah, that drive. Yeah, that drive. Actually, a couple of minutes later, we saw one. Well, Charles spotted one, very good uh, spot there. It was in a broken tree, uh, in a broken branch of a knob thorn, sitting with his little, little head out. Um, and they are lizards. With yes, yeah. big lizards, big, very big, big lizards. lizards. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, and then Michael Fleetwood, Brian, have you had any leopard sightings since you've been interning? I haven't. Lions. Thank you, Casey. Oh, they're close. Oh. Can you pick them up? Those male lions are close. I'd say they're less than a kilometer from us right now. I think we know, we've got an after-dinner plan, again. I think we do. 
Um, you just remind, remind of the question? Michael wants to know, have you had any leopard sightings yet? No, no. And it's... Came close yesterday. So unfortunate because I was on the vehicle yesterday and we we're tracking these, these mating pair of leopards and all of a sudden Brent, <laughs> yeah, Brent out of the corner of my, you know, my eye, he shouted, uh, back to the car. Back don't, to move. The, yeah, no, don't move. Don't, 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 don't keep coming. Go back. Go, <laughs> go back. back. Go back. <laughs> and yeah, Brent bumped, bumped the leopard. And got was, growled at by a female leopard at about three meters. Yeah, and I wish I was there. Yes. Uh, I usually am right behind Brent's track. But that's time you were moving the car because yeah. the tracks had gone a different direction. Yeah. I'm yet to see a leopard, and I would love to, especially at night. I think that would be a good like, a sighting. And we've been putting some effort into the leopards at the moment. We, I think we tracked four different booming leopards yesterday. Yeah, we did. <laughs> One, there was a car in front of us, about five minutes ahead of us. She came out into the yeah. road, left a big smelly present on top of the tracks, and then disappeared. Yeah. And, um, unfortunately, we didn't know, but we're hoping to catch up with the leopards um, over this next period. We're going to yeah. definitely be looking for them. Okay, yeah. now Maybe let's have a look. On that sighting, we're about two minutes behind. Behind. Uh, yeah, it was just so unfortunate. So unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. We're so close. Okay, Brian, what is the collective noun for a lion? Let's see if you guys can get it faster than Brian. Okay, we're going to play Brian, Brian versus everyone out there in the YouTube world. It's either I know it or I don't. So I have to get it immediately or I don't. Okay, so a collective noun for, for, no. for lions. Uh, for lions! Uh, you heard me say it on the radio when I found them this afternoon. Located the... Oh, the pride. <laughs> Jeez, what I, I see you overthink these things. So I always overthink. Because you, you hear it so often and it becomes just part of your vocabulary and you think, okay. It's not okay. Um, let's start off with a, an easy one. Geese. Crows. Yes. Oh, a collective noun for crows. It's something dark. I it think. is quite dark. Um, a, a, well, I want to say. Let's see who can get a collective noun for crows. I want to say a, a plague of crows. No, but you're sort of on the right track. Oh. Uh, it just isn't. I don't think I'm. Okay, I'm, let's see. Come on, you've got some time. So, on the right track, we're thinking dark, we're thinking deep, we're thinking. I want to. I, I can't think. Um, don't give clues. Zander is sitting there going like this in the back. Oh, Michael and Joy were all faster than you. It is a murder. A murder of crows. Okay, sticking with the birds. <laughs> owls. Oh, uh, a parliament of owls. Correct. So Brian was faster. I'm just going to get everyone a, a chance to um, catch up. And we're going to do one more bird. Okay. This is going to be. No, let me do a mammal in between. Okay. Uh, an easy one. Okay. As easy as the lions. No. <laughs> okay. Leopard. Collective noun for leopard. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Rutherford Klein. Um, leopard, a leopard, a leopard. Uh, firstly, the scientific name for leopard is, is a panthera, panthera. That would be big cat, big cat. <laughs> panthera. Pardis. Pardis. Okay. Why did I say panthera? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway. Um, I have no idea what a collective noun for a leopard is. Okay, I think most people are. Here we go. Well then, Michael, a leap. A leap. A leap of leopards. A leap of think leopards. about the wine. There's a wine in South Africa yes. called leopards. Le 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 okay. Yeah. Very clever. Yes. There we go. Very Guys are on it. Leap of leopards. Okay. It's zebra. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, maybe Zander can give me a... a, a I'll give a, you a, a Okay, Zander, go for it. <laughs> is that your clue? <laughs> Zander's clue is this. Oh, uh, uh, is it show business or yeah. um, like a... Is it, is it a show business? It is in show, sort of in show business, but like, I'd say it's more like 1920s... A circus. No, not circus, <laughs> but like the... There we go. Casey's even shouting answers from back there. Did you hear it? I did not. Because you were talking. I should have heard it. Oh, there we go. Michael and Nicholas and Krista. A dazzle. A dazzle. Okay. And they are quite dazzling. Yes, yeah, the dazzle. If you if you see them in the live cams, they are very starkly different to everything else. I and mean, it's so lucky to see them as, you know, a bit of a bit of a change. So lacquer, for those who don't know, is a, a South Africanism. It's a colloquialism, which means very nice in Afrikaans. Mm. Okay. Okay, we're going to do... One more, and then I think we'll save some more for Friday. Yeah. This, okay, cool. and we're going to go back to the birds. Okay. What is the collective noun for, um, yes, for ravens, no? Oh. 
Yes, for ravens. Nothing's easy in this in this line of work, is it? <laughs> Cleft noun for ra for ravens. Mm -hmm. Is it along the lines of the crows? It is. It's quite it's quite dark, brooding. I would almost say. Okay. I can I can imagine it being something very different and not really relating to not that. quite as obvious as a murder. <laughs> okay, because no, that is quite stark in yes. your face. Uh, ravens. Uh, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's let's there's, have a look. There's nothing. Um, yeah, it is a tough one. It's a very tough one. <laughs> Thank you, Pterodactyl. We'll see you on Friday. Oh, that's a tough one. Oh, I think we've caught everyone. Yeah. An uh, unkindness, Timberjack. Well, I'm excited. I thought you guys know it's not a murder. An unkindness of ravens. That, that's, that's a good guess. It's a good guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give you guys a bit longer before I weigh in. Um, a, uh, start with? Okay. a C. It starts with a C. Ooh. Parliament is not uh, a macabre. Good guess, but no, Michael. I have you stumped. A midnight. Here we go, Bob. Well done, Bob Dorset. It is indeed a conspiracy. A of conspiracy. <laughs> it's, it is, I think it's one of my favourites. But I think we'll, we'll save the rest of the, the the collective nouns for Friday. That's so peculiar. A conspiracy and of ravens. Awesome. We well, can just imagine I them sitting that. sitting there waiting for you to die. And like, Yes, absolutely. I'm talking to you here behind your back. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. A conspiracy of ravens, a murder of crows, a dazzle of zebras, oh. a leap of leopards, and a pride of lions. And a parliament of owls. And a parliament of owls, and a business of mongoose. There we go. Okay. That's a, that is a good one. Now let me see. Um, well, thank yes. you very much, Brian. Is that it? it uh, that's it. For my you time done. Your time is done for now. Well, we'll see you on Friday. It is Friday. Yes, it is yes. Friday. The day after tomorrow, which is Thursday. Yes. I, right. I can't keep track of the days as well. Who knows? Um, but what we're going to go chat about now, right. and I'm going to find my Thank right you. spot. My pleasure, Brian. Take your chair with you. Thank you. So I can scoot back. Sunday, I'm in the right place. Yeah. Okay, great. Let me move and scoot my stuff back across here. Have a sip of water. We're going to do the news today. You can see Vim and Zander have been having lots of fun as we develop Animal World Live. I actually feel like I'm a news anchor. I almost said it says, so, no, I'm joking. So uh, we found some cool stories and actually um, Charles found the first story for us today. Charles is, of course, our financial director. Um, and uh, it is about a deep sea mouth brooding fish. Now, that is very, very ah. rare. Oh, Thor. Ah. Only 2% of fish species in the world are actually mouth brooders. Most of them live in shallow waters or amongst the rocks. And even then, most mouth brooders are actually freshwater. To, to find a fish that is at 500 meters deep off Puerto Rico, uh, that is a mouth brooder. And it is called a parazin fish and they're quite pretty they're nice little pink chaps um so they found it about 500 meters deep i should have written down what that is in feet because i have no idea and my conversions are horrible so maybe one of you can tell me how much how deep that is in feet um and it was obviously filmed off uh, one of those automated underwater submarines um so how they actually found found out is that um quite a lot of the deep sea stuff is sort of it's it uh, i think the, the word described in articles is a renaissance of discoveries in the deep ocean at the moment so we're learning so much about that we probably know more about outer space than we do about the deepest sections of our ocean so what happens is those fish have store their eggs just behind their gills they've got a sort of gelatinous substance that keeps them uh, the eggs stuck in there and they can have well on the on the species that they've had on the specimens that they've had a look at about 500 embryos developing now it takes a lot of effort to be a mouth brooder so generally you find they're in sort of really good food areas so high high amounts of of nutrients and food now deep ocean is not one of those places so you would think it's quite a strange adaption for a deep water fish especially one that lives on sandy open bottoms 
uh, where there's nowhere to hide. And that's probably the reason they've done it. So there's nowhere for them to store their eggs safely um, away from other predators. So the safest place is in their mouth. Now, they do not know whether this fish is able to feed while the eggs are in their mouth, because you could accidentally swallow all your children, um, which would not be ideal for the propagation of a species but yeah so it's probably because they live on sandy areas and their eggs would be exposed to other predators now most deep water fish will actually lay their eggs and then the babies will go up into the shallower warmer and more nutrient rich areas uh, to develop before returning down to the deep which is actually a very low food zone so very very fascinating still quite a lot more research to be done on those beautiful little pink parathon fish Okay, so that's from the deep off Puerto Rico. Now we're going to go, um, and a big thank you to Chris, who emailed in this little news article about three-toed skinks from Australia. And uh, um, Australian three-toed skinks. And you can see they're one of those very strange skinks uh, that almost look like a snake. Now, before we go into why they're so cool, I'm going to ask you guys, why do you think the three-toed skink has tiny little arms and looks like a snake? But we'll talk about why it, they're so interesting. They're the first vertebrate that gives birth to live young and lays eggs. So how absolutely fascinating is that? So they, they give birth to, uh, to live young and lay eggs. So the researchers were studying the skink and they saw it lay three eggs and they thought, okay, well, we must keep a look on the eggs. And a couple of weeks later, the same individual that laid the eggs actually gave birth to live young. And they're saying this is sort of a nice little insert into evolution. Now, I do suggest you go read the article there. Um, very, very cool. Okay, now that's it for the news. And uh, we're going to just, a new segment that we're sort of adding into Animal World Live is what we've been up to. And uh, we've been out at night quite a bit recently trying to follow those male lions. They've been giving us a bit of a hard time, uh, taking forever to find them. And then once we found them, they're doing what lions do best. And that is... Sleep. Um, but... Of course, when we're out late at night, we get some very, very cool sightings of some not too often seen creatures. And, um, oh, we've got, f there we go. We've got our porcupines. How cool was that? We saw a very relaxed pair of porcupines um, while we were out looking for the male lions. I think that was last night? No, night before last. So I'm waiting to see if anyone's got any answers in here for the skink quiz. And how cool is that? So nice to see porky pigs. Um, no one has any answers for why the skinks look like a snake yet. Or maybe I've missed them. Sorry, I've been doing quite a few other things. Um, camouflage? No. It's a bit of subterfuge, though. Um, but while you guys still keep thinking about that, we've chatted a little bit about the rain that we had last night. Now, it's unprecedented normally to get big storms. We were pretty sure we had been, were done for rain for the year uh, and we were heading into dry season. The grass was drying up, those water holes were drying up. And then last night we had an incredible storm from about two o'clock. It rained very heavily to about five o'clock. And um, we can show you what it looked like on the live cams because it was quite, quite impressive.
Isn't that absolutely amazing? And because we're so close to the mountains, we actually get a lot of runoff. So we had 48 millimeters of rain last night, which is an incredible amount for this time of the year, which bodes very well for a lot of the herbivores going into the dry season. It means we're gonna have some good grass late in the season this year. Now, uh, those those of you who've been following us on social media and watching um, the tale of two mothers have uh, realized that well Brian and I were tracking the lions the other day we found the most magical little water hole that has been holding water and you can see all the lion tracks so this afternoon after finding the lions we decided to go have a look at it again so this was five or six days ago and that is what it is now the river is actually flowing so that is the exact same spot that the animals were just eking a little bit of water out of um, a few days ago. It is now a flowing river. Now I see lots of people are getting the answers right here. We've got Michael, Marcy, um, Saf oh, um, Nicholas, um, Kalena, uh, lots of people right. It is indeed that those skinks are slowly but surely actually losing their legs completely. There are species of skinks that are completely legless. Um, and it is indeed to imitate a snake. And of course, Australia has got so many venomous snakes. So if you're pretending to be something that can kill you, it's probably quite good for survival. Now, we're gonna move back to the weather we've been having and um, have a look at what we filmed a few days ago at that exact same spot, which is now a flowing river. And they're at that little pass. It's been an absolutely exciting morning tracking lions on foot. Brian's first semi-lion charge, it wasn't even a serious one, she just went whoa, 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 from about 30 meters. And now they've made their way. Oh, look, you can see them playing behind me. Um, and we are getting them on the long gun. Now they've made their way to sort of what we've been nicknaming the secret water spot that Brian and I found while we were tracking them two days ago. So, very exciting. Look at them all playing, isn't that cool? The playfulness of youth extends through all animals of our wide world and lions are no different. However, their play is helping them hone the skills that they will need to one day become efficient hunting and killing machines. Bucket and Bibi, now over a year old, still have the mischievous playfulness of youth and can't help join in with the four smaller cubs. Wasn't that amazing? And if you want to watch the rest of the catch up with that pride, go catch The Tale of Two Mothers, episode seven. And that's where you can find that full story. We just thought it was such a nice way to show you how it's changed overnight with the amount of rain we've had. Ah, thank you very much, Mandy. Now, of course, we are coming towards the end of tonight's episode of Animal World Live, but it's not quite over yet. We just want to remind you that tomorrow at what time exactly? I've forgotten. Vim will remind me. Where's Casey? Where's Casey? Is it 5 or 5.30? At 5.30, we think it's 5.30 Central African time, um, you are going to be able to join Casey for a live mindfulness and meditation session f for sunset. So hopefully the sun will be out. We won't have any clouds and uh, you can join Casey for a live sunset mindfulness and meditation session um, from out in the African bush at 5.30 p.m. Central African time. If you are interested in joining Casey on that mindfulness and meditation session, just have a look after the show. It is already scheduled. You can put up a reminder so you don't miss it. Uh, and of course, what we do out here every day wouldn't be possible without all of you, our fans, our patrons, um, and a big thank you to everyone who's providing us uh, some super chat donations, and of course to our patrons, um, to our sponsors, Lead Lenser, um, and uh, also to the, the Steenberg, fam Steenberg family who let us 
stay here during this lockdown in their on their magnificent farm uh, we are very very privileged so before we wrap up i'm just going to see if we've got any a few more questions um blue yes bucket is uh, over a year old now um let's see uh, Marcy, there is already an episode 8 out, eh? Oh, yeah, yes. So, Tale of Two Mothers, uh, episode 8, it was already out. It went out on Sunday, so you can catch up with that as well. Um, and uh, as I said, we, we will be wrapping up the Tale of Two Mothers uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but we will not be ending tales, so to speak. The Tale of Two Mothers will be coming to an end, but we want to make it um, more general. Uh, and that will be to cover the tales of the low fault, the tales of the African bush. So we can cover more species. We can do elephants. We can do rhinos. Um, and um, to just keep it a bit more general, we are also working on converting tails and bucket into a super secret project. I can't say too much about just yet. Um, our pleasure, Tanis. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, very, very kind of you. And. Uh, Yes, Lisa, you're old already. Um, I meant nine, Marcy, yes, there will be an episode nine coming, uh, probably on, I'm looking at Sunday before he shouts me, Sunday. Yeah, I think Sunday. On Sunday. There will be episode nine of Tale of Two Mothers coming. Uh, I will give you fair warning before, uh, for the last, when the last episode is coming out. Um, but again, we will still be following Bucket, BB, and the Reed Spread Pride, Mabaiwai, MP, the Cubs, uh, just in a slightly different format as we expand the Tales series to cover other species. Oh, TD, TD Kid One, uh, thank you so much. Uh, TD Kid One has got her Shongile, the missing uh, painted dog swag from Teespring. So if you are interested in any wildlife uh, t shirts or pillows or mugs um, whether it be from the tails or some of the other incredible creatures that I've been lucky enough to spend time with over the last years um, you can go have a look on our Teespring store there's quite a lot there and there's going to be some new merchandise coming out shortly and uh, I'm going to wait to announce we've brought on a very special designer to help us with all of that should I tell them Vim hmm what do you think Vim so but Vim wasn't listening apparently um, I just said, should we tell them who our special designer is, who's going to be coming on to help us with uh, the designing of Teespring products? Vim says, yeah, sure, why not? I think I'm going to make you suffer for a little bit longer before I tell you. So let's see what other comments we've got here. Um, ah, Tom, thank you for tuning us on to Safari with Suyash. Enjoyed it a lot. Great. It is a wonderful series. And hopefully, once the world is slightly back to normal, we're going to be able to do some work with Suyash, bring him out here to Africa, and hopefully, fingers crossed, one day, us go across there to look at some tigers and sloth bears and all sorts of other exciting things. Um, yes, I'll Lara more. Like, share, and hit the thumbs up button. It'll be much appreciated. Um, Uh, and so very very exciting no it is not James Hendry who will be joining us on Teespring it is none other than the thumb himself Brian Joubert is going to be doing some designs on Teespring and taking over the running of the Teespring uh, he is an incredibly a talented designer and graphic designer so he's going to be working with our photos and, and, and stuff from Tale of Two Mothers and whatnot to create some new content for the teespring stuff so keep a look out hopefully that stuff will be coming out um probably towards the end of the month um so very very exciting stuff um yes claw is around <laughs> there we go you need something to keep going with with grumpy um uh, Michael Claw is not going to be allowed to come outside for an appearance. It is night. It is dark. There are lions and leopards here, and she is just a snack. So, unless someone carries her, you're gonna go grab her, Zander. Everyone wants to see her. She's sleeping on the couch, but she'll probably make a lot of noise. Okay, we'll bring Claw out for a quick booze, waiting for her Teespring order to arrive on Saturday. Well, thank you very much, Boo. Oh, there we go. Growl, growl, growl. Zander has woken up the the. Zander has woken up the little mini chainsaw. Oh, the baby, are you tired? The pooping princess. And Uncle Zander is waking you wake up. Oh, dear. Oh, there we go. Are you tired? And Uncle Zander woke you up. Oh, show peace. 
So again, a very big thank you um, to everyone who makes the Painted Dog TV possible. Yeah, even you. Our patrons, um, people who support us on Teespring, on YouTube, for Super Chat, um, to the Sternberg family, to to the Ledwood uh, Homeowners Association, to the Reach Game Reserve. Um, it is wouldn't be possible without all of you, and to Led Lenza for making the day. I mean, sorry, the making the night day. Um, so thank you very much, guys, and thank you for joining us on this episode of Animal World Live. Now, I have to do this because it is just the funniest thing I've seen, and I think we all need a little bit of humor and lightheartedness in these very trying times. Let's go look at lions falling into water again. <laughs>